In this episode of Hardcore Minecraft, I spent 100 days building a bunch of insane automatic farms to solve so many of my problems in my hardcore world, and I almost died doing it. This was a crazy adventure. In the last episode, I transformed the end into the overworld, but to continue making the ultimate end base, I'm gonna need a bunch of beacons. And since we're spending 100 days building a bunch of OP farms, the first one that I'm gonna build is a wither skeleton farm. And conveniently, the first thing we need to build this farm is just a bit of obsidian. We're also gonna need some glass, some building blocks, a bunch of nether brick, some walls, and everything else. Now there's just two more items that I need, and the first one requires a mine shaft. So let's check down here in this cave. Whoa! This cave is huge! No mine shaft in there, unfortunately. Now what about in this one? Oh, another big cave? Wow, but still no mine shaft, unfortunately. All right, I found another cave. Let's see what's inside. Ooh, it's also pretty big. I get to really improve my elytra skills flying through here. But after flying around for a bit longer, there's no mine shaft. A giant rune portal. Let's see what's inside. Oh my god! A god apple! <laughs> Wait, what? I have two now. Ah, uh, I just popped a totem while flying into a wall. Oh my god. <laughs> Another cave. Let's see what it has to offer. I didn't have any luck finding any mine shafts, but I had a big brain idea. The last item I'm looking for is cobwebs, and last I remember, they spawn inside the libraries here at the stronghold. Now, all I have to do is find one, which I just did. Nice. And then we can mine up the cobwebs. Now that I have a bunch of cobwebs and I'm completely lost, I'm going to dig straight up, use my shears to get some seagrass, and use it to get the last item that we need. Oh my god! <gasps> no! The creeper exploded the turtle eggs. Well, I guess we'll try these turtles over here instead. Here we go, we finally got our turtle eggs. And now we officially have everything we need to build this farm. Now that I have all my shulkers loaded up, I can take them, head to the nether, and look for a fortress within a soul sand valley. Which, lucky for me, I know exactly where one is. If I remember correctly, it should be just over here. Yep, here it is. And I actually forgot something, so I need to head home real quick. The thing I forgot was a bunch of fire resistance potions. And I'm actually gonna brew up even more, making sure it's the extra long-lasting kind, and popping it all into a shulker box. And the first thing we have to do is find the highest point of the fortress. And for some reason, there's a billion mobs nearby. All right, I think this is actually the highest point right here. And this is where I'm going to start building the farm. Now, the first thing I have to do is find the center of four chunks. And using F3 and G, I can find it right here. Here's the center. And now I just have to place some chests in this weird configuration like this, and then build out in every direction with nether bricks. And then I got to fill all of it in. The amount of blazes and mobs and just everything spawning here is insane. No wonder this farm has to be built in a soul sand valley. Guys, look at the amount of ghasts hitting me right now. There's so many, and look at all these blazes. All right, I wasn't recording, but I just got into a fight with a bunch of wither skeletons, and I'm on half a heart, and I think my totem is about to pop. Oh, what? How did it not pop? Oh my god. The farm isn't even set up, and I'm already getting wither skeletons spawning up here. That just goes to show how crazy this farm is going to be once it's actually properly set up. And there we go. We have the entire platform all done. And now I just have to place a whole bunch of walls. We can then add our turtle legs on top of all the corner walls. This will lure the zombified piglin over here. That way they can despawn. And now we're going to build the center area. We can then go ahead and build an iron golem. I'm going to grab him like this. Oh no, he's on fire. Please don't die. All right, we have the iron golem in and he almost died to fire. And then I can add repeaters all around the golem like this, putting slabs on top like this. I can then complete the portal and add slabs on top to spawn proof it. The bottom portion of the farm is officially done now. Now I can light up the portal and fly all the way up here so I can get onto the roof. There we go. Now I have to find the center area that we put the farm around and then build a little AFK platform around it. There we go. Now we've got to go up and build another portal, just like that. Now I have to make the drop shoot for the skeletons and that's the killing chamber complete. Now I have to make this long path and build another portal. Oh, I just got an achievement. Nice. Subspace bubble. And now that we're down here, I have to find my way out of this cave and make my way up to some coordinates that I marked out previously. And the overworld section of the farm is done. Now I can go home. And it looks like it all linked up nicely. Now the farm is finally done. It does take a few minutes for it to start working because all the skeletons have to line up in the overworld. But let's wait for a little bit and I'll be back when it starts. Oh my god, it's working! Check it out! There's already so many coming through. Alright, I'm gonna sit here for about 15 minutes and let's see how much stuff we get. It's been about 20 minutes and look at all of this. We have three shulker boxes of loot and we got 30 skulls. That's insane. That means we can get unlimited withers and more importantly, beacons. If you want me to use this farm to get a bunch of withers to fight my army of iron golems, leave a like. Now that we're done with the farm, it's time to fly home. Now the next farm isn't exactly a farm, but I will be using all the skulls I got to farm some nether stars. There we go. We just got one and there's two and three and four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
and 10. And the reason why I did 10 is because there's 10 towers and I'm going to be putting one beacon under every single one of them. So to get this done, I have to mine all the way down. That way the beacon beam can pass through and we should be reaching the bottom any second now. Oh, okay. Gotta be quick. Oh my gosh. We have one cleared out. That's nine more to go. And that's all 10 towers done. And I actually got quite a bit of obsidian from doing that too. So let's head home real quick. Store away all of my obsidian. Just kidding, I'm gonna need like one or two stacks. Smelt up some glass and use it to craft up all of my beacons. And to make all these beacons full powered, we're gonna need just over 25 stacks of blocks. So I'm here at the villagers crafting up all of my iron and emeralds. And right now we only have 16 stacks of blocks. That's okay though, because we're gonna be building some more farms in the overworld, which will let my iron farm run the entire time. So hopefully by the end of the 100 days, we're gonna have enough. Now that we're down here, we have to mine up even more obsidian because we have to place these beacons underneath the pillars and the pillars go down to Y0. And here's my tunnel going all the way up for the beacon beam. That's the first layer of the first beacon done. Let's work on layer two. And it looks like we have to clear out even more obsidian. All right, and now we have one layer left, but to access it, I'm gonna place the beacon down and then I'll place the layer. There it goes, it's working. All right, on this one, let's do speed two. Beacon number one of 10 is done. Now I'll just fly over to the next one carefully and let's get to mining. Ooh, that's quite a bit of Enderman spawning because I have the rest of the entire platform spawn-proofed. I think I should fly home real quick, grab some torches, and then light up the beacon down here so no Enderman can spawn. Get out of here. And that's beacon number two done. On this one, I'll be giving myself jump boost. That's beacon number three done. And on this one, I'm going to be adding resistance. Beacon number four is done. And on this one, I'm going to be adding strength. And just like that, we have beacon number five all done. All right, and now we have beacon number six. This last beacon used up the rest of my blocks, but I'm going to go around to each of the pillars and clear out just the bottom four layers. That way, when we get more blocks, I can add them. All right, so I have it all cleared out and we have just four more beacons to go. So I'm going to head back to the overworld and scout out a location for the next farm of today. I think I'm going to build it right here on top of the creeper farm. Now our next farm for today is going to be a sugarcane farm because this is my last remaining rockets. And I'll also be needing some observers which requires a bunch of quartz. Two stacks should be more than enough. I can then mine all of it up, craft it all into observers, and gather everything else up. Since the farm is going to be right here next to our main base, I want it to look good. So I'm going to chop down some spruce trees and some oak trees. Hopefully this is enough. And I'm also going to bring along some copper. And I'm quickly going to do the outline of where I want the farm to be. And this looks good so far. All right, I've done a bit of work and sorted out some issues that I was having with the storage system. I did some testing and it looks like we're only going to be able to get four on each side. That's going to be way too slow. So instead of building it up here, I'm going to relocate it somewhere else. And I think I know just a place to relocate the farm. Look at all this space we have up here. We can build it where all the chickens are. But since I don't need the XP from the chickens anymore. And it's just you left alive. All right, the rails are placed down. Now I can place the pistons one up like this. And then for a line of observers out the back like this. There we go. And now I'm actually all out of redstone dust. So we have to go mining for some. Luckily, we have a nice and big cave down here that I can hopefully find some in. There we go. Here's some. And I'm going to go down to an old mine to see if I can find some because the best place to find it is all the way down at bedrock. There we go. Mining all of this with fortune three should hopefully give us what we need. Perfect. More than enough. Now, all we have to do is run a line of redstone at the back of every observer. Then I can hopefully rebuild this roof. And the first layer is all done. Now I'm going to place a bunch of dirt on the inside here and repeat a second layer on the inside. All right, I have the second layer almost done, but I ran out of observers and pistons, but I did make the little collection system right here. So we have to go back down to the mines and mine even more redstone. This time I'll be going to an even bigger cave and hopefully we can find even more redstone exposed down here. Yes, I already see lots of it. Nice. Are those diamonds? Yay, more diamonds. Redstone, yay. Okay, I'm officially lost. I'm just gonna dig straight up. I made it, finally. Now I can just fly home real quick and mine this huge tower all up and craft it all up into pistons and observers. Place down the rest of my pistons, the rest of the observers. As I was flying back to the barn, look at this, a piece of redstone that I forgot to mine. All right, and this should be all done. Here it is, two layers complete. Now I'm gonna plant one like this and let's see if it works. And every single side works. Now all I gotta do is place down every single bit of sugarcane all along here. I'm gonna throw a few items up here and I'm gonna see if it can pick them up. And now let me just double check if the items are dropping off. And they are. 
perfect the farm is all set up and let's head over to the iron farm real quick and see how much it produced okay that's not that much enough for 23 blocks but better than nothing now let's fly back over to the end and you know what i just realized i never got the advancement is it a plane which is the one where you have to look at the dragon with a spyglass that means i'm gonna have to respawn the dragon again and when you respawn the dragon it resets all the obsidian pillars so i think i should go down here and destroy all the beacons all right it was very painful but i finally destroyed all of the beacons and i also brought four end crystals with me now i'm just gonna have to grab four pieces of obsidian real quick place them around the portal just like this and place down the crystals hopefully one last time oh i can't believe we have to do this oh no everything's on fire ah, it's destroying all the pillars all of my hard work here we go. Oh my gosh. And it respawned all the bedrock too. I brought an insane amount of glass bottles with me. So hopefully I can just load up on dragon's breath. I forgot to bring beds. So I think I'm actually just going to have to go back up here. Here we go. Last hits. Boom. Done. Oh, and you know what I forgot to do? That. I almost forgot to do it. We finally got... Is it a plane? Nice. All right, we got the advancement that we set out to get, and now we have to mine all 10 of these obsidian pillars yet again. And I'm gonna do the exciting part first, which is down here. And luckily it did keep the stuff that was outside of the pillar, so it'll make it just a little bit easier to mine this all out. All right, I placed on all the blocks that I had, and I only had enough to build these four beacons right here, and this fifth one is just missing a few blocks. So now I'm gonna go to the top of every single tower and dig all the way down. That way the beacons have a beam to go all the way up. All right, and here we are. I made it down to the very first beacon, and it looks like it's working good. All right. I got all the pillars mined out, and from doing all of that, I got two entire shulker boxes of obsidian. I still don't have enough iron or emeralds to make all the beacons full powered, so I'm gonna head over to the XP farm real quick to heal up my tools, and head back to the overworld. When I went to go respawn the ender dragon, I brought a ton of glass bottles, because I thought I was gonna get a lot more dragon's breath, and all of those glass bottles used every single last bit of my glass. Right now, the only way for me to get more glass is with this one villager that trades me glass, but there's only one villager in this entire house, so the next farm we're gonna build is a glass farm. It's not exactly a glass farm, but I'm going to get a bunch of villagers, turn them into librarians. Why do you not want the job? There's already a librarian in here? Wait, what? Oh, so this librarian was probably taking the job from the other one. Okay, this makes a lot more sense. I'm going home to grab some rails. Now let's see if I can get this villager moved in. Now, will you take the job? Finally! And then we can push them into the conversion area. Amazing! All right, I've gotten six villagers so far. Let's see if I can splash them all at once. And we'll feed them golden apples. Oh, my totem. Oh, my God. Okay, I got all six of them, though. I guess my splash potions of weakness don't do much when there's six villagers attacking you all at once. Now we can go check on all the villagers down here, and it looks like they're all cured. Perfect. Okay, so it turns out that minecarts are actually extremely difficult to deal with because look at them all bunched up like this. I can't even get them to sit straight, and it's so annoying. Let's abduct one more villager, turn it into a librarian. All right, here comes the villager. If all goes according to plan, it should just slot in right here. Is it going to work? It worked. And there we go. We finally have all of our villagers. That's crazy. All right, I just leveled all of them up and I got five out of eight of them to trade me glass, which is not too bad. For the next farm on the list, I want to build something cool, something exciting, something dangerous. And the farm that checks all those boxes for me is a wither rose farm. Also, side note, I literally just got here to this farm. It hasn't even been two minutes and I already have four skulls. This farm has to be built in the end and we have to go through one of these portals real quick. And then I have to locate a separate end portal. Oh my gosh. And there's one right over here. That's amazing. It's really close to our original portal. We first have to start off by breaking the portal inside of the bedrock. So we build this little contraption that looks like this, place a red mushroom on top and bone meal it to break the portal. Okay. It didn't work. <laughs> Oh, I know what I did. The dirt has to be down like this. Hit it with some bone meal. There we go. And it looks like it broke the portal. Perfect. And now it's time to start building the actual farm itself. And what's kind of weird about this farm is that it actually uses enchanting tables as blocks for the farm, which is kind of strange. We now have to spawn a little chicken in here, place a slab on top of its head. Now we have to build the Enderman drop chute going all the way up. And this farm uses Enderman to get wither roses. So I'm building the platform now. And there we go. It's all done. And now to spawn an Endermite. There we go. It's going to be called Enderman Go Burr. Um, I forgot to bring a rail. <laughs> so I head home real quick, grab myself a rail and we're back. I can hopefully place the rail now. I need to go one up actually. And then no, please don't escape. No. Oh my God. It's dead. I got to head back, grab another name tag, rename it. And this time I got to build a platform one higher, place the rail before we even try. And then we can try again. Why is it taking so long? There we go. Oh my god, I forgot to name tag it. <laughs> uh, name tag it. 
Enderman go burr. It worked. We have our trusty little Endermite in here. And then I can add two trap doors just like this. That way the Enderman will fall down. And now I can add an enchanting table on top of this hopper right here. That way the Endermen won't die when they fall. Now it's time for the last and arguably the most exciting part of building the entire farm. And that's spawning the wither. Now before it explodes, we have to place water up here. There we go. Just like that. I'm kind of scared. Okay. It looks like it worked. Yes. The blue line means it's looking at the chicken. And now the farm should be totally set up. I am going to add something cool though. And that's renaming the farm to be Wither Rose Go Burr. <laughs> Now the farm is all set up, I'm going to spawn proof the entire island with water. That way the Enderman can't teleport out and there won't be any down here distracting the wither. And there it is, all nice and spawn proof. Now hopefully this thing works well. I'm going to do a quick test, maybe 10-15 minutes, and we'll see if it works. Alright, it's been about 10 minutes, let's go see how much we've gotten. Ooh, oh my gosh, that is a lot of stuff. In just that short amount of time, we got about 25 stacks, which is really, really good. Now I'll just pop all of my loot into a shulker box and head back to the end gateway. Now the one thing we haven't been able to do today is finish all of these beacons. So I'm going to head back to the overworld, gather up some supplies, and clear out a bit of space behind the farmhouse to make a micro crop farm. Now we'll have dispensers going into the dirt on every side, and then we'll place a couple of observers like this. There we go. Wow, that's very loud. <laughs> Let me turn this down. <laughs> and now I'm just setting up a bit of control for the clock. And the farm is done. Now I just have to add a couple of hoppers and chests going in like this. And there it all is. Now I brought along a bunch of bones from the Wither Skeleton Farm. And I can turn it all into bone meal. And I should be able to just turn it on. Holy crap, it's so fast. And in just about five minutes, we managed to get all of this. Now, hopefully I can bring it to my farmer villagers and trade it for a profit. This is actually not a great deal. I think I'm being scammed. <laughs> From that entire shulker box of stuff, I only got a stack and a half of emeralds. I think we need to find a better way to get emeralds. And that's going to be exploiting my librarian villagers to get me a bunch of bookshelves. And then I'm going to break the bookshelves to get books and then sell it back to them. Okay, I'm going to start keeping track of my emeralds. I'm at a stack and 57 and we're going to do one round of trades. So I started with a stack and 57 and I get exactly a stack and 57 back. Okay, so I didn't make anything. Now there is one more thing that I can try. And weirdly enough, I'm all out of cobblestone. And I'll use my cobblestone to make a bunch of observers and use those observers to make a melon and pumpkin farm. And to finish the farm, I'll be needing just two pieces of glowstone. And I'll be placing that right here in the center. For the farm to work properly, we have to place blocks on top of every observer and then a no block on top of every single piston. And there we go. Now I just have to build a collection system underneath, which is just going to be a simple minecart rail. Oh my god, it's so loud. And here we go, it's all cleared out down here. Now I just have to go grab some rails. I have the hopper minecart line all done, but I'm out of redstone again. So we have to go find another cave and go mining. Ooh, yes, lots of redstone, perfect. And then we can mine it all up, placing a few blocks here and there, along with some powered rails. Okay, and now I can try to put a hopper minecart on it to see if it works well. Looks good so far. Now I can go all the way around and place my dirt back up here so we can hide the rails. And the farm is all done. Now I'm just doing a little bit of decoration. And to make it a lot quieter, I'm going to be placing slabs over everything because note blocks are a lot quieter when they're covered by a block. And I think I'm going to bring these down by one and then place deep slate tile stairs on top, which should look kind of cool. Now here on the observers and pistons, I'm going to place some upside down cut copper stairs and it's going to look so cool once they oxidize. And then right here, I'm going to place some black stained glass panes so we can see inside. And there we go. It's all done. I might do something else on the roof, but for now, I think it looks pretty cool. Now let's check to see how much we got while I was building it. Okay, let's go sell these for some emeralds and hopefully soon I can become very rich. Let's also check on the iron farm. Oh wow, it actually did pretty good. Now we have all these blocks, so let's head back over to the end and see if I can build up another beacon. Awesome, we got another beacon all the way up to full power. Now I wonder if I can get one more. Awesome, we only have three beacons left, but every single beacon beam is now complete. And look at this, it looks amazing. All right, I left my PC on AFK overnight and I managed to get this many melons and pumpkins, this much sugar cane, and now to check on the iron farm. Oh, hold on, I think it's broken. There's a villager missing right here. All right, that shouldn't be too hard to fix. All I have to do is grab a villager from the breeder. And this time we don't need him converted. So I'll just send him along this way. And then I have to grab some more rails. And then we can divert the rail line to go up this way. I can then build a temporary path while also practicing my speed bridging skills. And hopefully it all links up nicely, okay? And in he goes. And there we go. We already have an iron golem spawning. Okay, that was really easy to fix. I don't really know why the villager disappeared like that, but I am just going to place a torch here just in case. 
bunk. And I also want to bring a bunch of sugarcane. That way I can turn it into paper and hopefully trade it for a profit. Hopefully I can get less scammed by the farmers. And it looks like they're selling out pretty quick. I only have three, so I think I should go get some more. Luckily, that'll be pretty easy. Just got to abduct one, turn him into a farmer, stock up on a bit more items at the auto crop farm and use those to lock in the villagers trades. And now we have six more. Hopefully I can splash them all without getting my totem popped again. And then we'll give them all golden apples. And there we go, all six curing. Then we can start transferring all the cured villagers over to the farm. I'll put your workstation right here. Perfect, green sparkles means we're all good. And if everything went right, yep, it looks like they're all in here and they all have jobs. And let's try to level them all up now just to see if they have any good trades for me. And it looks like all of them have melon and pumpkin trades, which is amazing. And they all trade for one emerald. This is so good. And we got just over a stack of blocks. We need three more stacks of blocks to complete all the beacons. So I'm gonna wait for them to restock and do it all over again. After trading with the villagers for one more round and getting up to level 95, I managed to get all the blocks that we need. So let's fly back over to the end and we can finally complete the last remaining beacons. And it's done. Amazing. Now let me just expose the beacons. That way I can get access to them. And on this one, I'm gonna put speed two. On the second beacon, I'm gonna put resistance two. On the third beacon, I'm gonna put jump boost two. On the fourth beacon, I'm gonna put strength two. On the fifth beacon, I'm gonna put speed two again. On the sixth, I'm gonna put resistance two again. On the eighth, I'm gonna put strength two. On the ninth, I'm gonna put regeneration and speed. And on the 10th, I'm gonna put jump boost and regeneration. And now if we go back here to the center, we should have all of the beacon effects. And it looks like we do. And after having brought all 10 beacons up to full power, that brings us to the end of the 100 days. It was more like 112, by the way. But if you guys enjoyed this and want to see more, leave a like, and I'll see you guys all in the next episode. Bye-bye.